All right, we'll call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with a uh, reading of the opening remarks uh, format for the night's evening, and then we'll follow that up with Pledge of Allegiance and additional items. So welcome to the March 9th, 2022, regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into an executive session, the public has a right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairsmen, uh, chairspeople if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. So the agenda is as follows. After I read this, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance with a roll call, approval of last month's meet, uh, minutes, and then review of the draft written decision from last month, uh, the appeal heard on February 9, 2022. Appeal number 2718, a special exemption appeal by Teradyne Consultants on behalf of Contour Properties at 8 Science Park Road, Unit 3. Afterwards, there will be a shoreland setback determination by Sashi Meisner, landscape architecture on behalf of the Brewster Harding Riverbank LLC, um, followed by four appeals. Appeal number 2719, a miscellaneous appeal by PGB Holdings at 92 Broadturn Road. Appeal number 2720, a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Custom Concepts on behalf of Eddie and Dulce uh, Garon, 30 Pillsbury Drive. Appeal number 2721, a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Custom Concepts on behalf of Kirk and Danielle Foley at 3 Jasper Street. And appeal number 2722, a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Pamela Stone at 17 Ferry Road. Afterwards, there will be some zoning board comments and adjournment. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to uh, demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria and provisions of the applicable appeal. And the board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each of the criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exemption criteria has not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. In many cases, the appellant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the request for the variance. Please understand that this is not legally relevant to the appeal, no matter how sympathetic the board may be, be to the applicant's uh, situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criterion, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there's a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state the conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support the decision of the motion. In most cases, the board will request that the staff prepare a draft written decision based on the stated findings of facts and conclusions, as well as the audio and visual and supporting materials in the record for approval in the next meeting. A general vote will be taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. If the majority of the voting members uh, vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as of the date the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of the writ uh, final written decision. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of the board's decision. Also, if anyone has, if anyone present at this hearing may wish to preserve your individual right to file any such, re such appeal, you must be certain that this board records evidences of your appearance this evening on the basis to support, uh, of your support or opposition. Again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation. All board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair. This evening I'll be the chair. Uh, so next up, we'll work with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next up, Doreen, could we get a roll call, please? Woody Karen? Here. David Bohr? Here. Peter Freilinger? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Christine Snow? Here. And Richard Silver? Here. All right, thank you. Has everyone had a chance to review last month's February 9th, 2022 uh, minutes as presented? Seeing some nods. Uh, are there any um, critiques to it? Any comments or corrections to be made? No. 
No. Um, so, uh, apologize. This evening we do have a full agenda. Um, so, as part of tonight's discussions, I will be opening up the opportunity to weigh in, provide any comments. Um, as compared to previous board meetings where I'd go down and ask each individual member for their comments, just to try to save some time and redundancy. So that will give you each all uh, the opportunity to weigh in and provide comments, but if you don't have anything to add, uh, feel free not to speak. So at this point, I'm not hearing any comments to the minutes, so could we just take a quick vote to approve them? I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bork. All in favor? Uh, one at a time. Um, Mr. Bork? Yes. Uh, Mr. Fronger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? Yeah, aye. And Mr. Uh, Skilton? I'm going to abstain since I was not at the meeting. All right, and I vote as in the affirmative as well. Next up, we'll move to the approval of the draft written decision for the appeal heard at the February 9, 2022 meeting. Appeal number 2718, special exemption appeal by Teradyne Consultants on behalf of Contour Properties at 8 Science Park Road, Unit 3. Do we have a motion? I vote that. So moved. All right, and do we have a second? A second. Are there any comments regarding those uh, that written decision? Seeing none, seeing the movement, uh, Ms. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Miss uh, Stevenson. Miss Stevenson, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Miss Snow? Aye. Uh, Mr. Fonger? Yes. And Miss uh, Mr. Sutton? Yes. Right. And I vote yes as well. So that passes. Uh, moves forward. Um, all right, so next up we're gonna get to our first First new item for the, tonight, the Shoreland Setback Determination by Sashi Meisner Landscape Architecture LLC on behalf of Brewster Harding Riverbank LLC, 370 U.S. Route 1 Assessor's Map U039, Lot 44. So good evening. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, to get started, just pull that out. Would you, uh, pardon me, would you like to share a little bit more about what brings you here this evening? Sure. Uh, my name is Sashi Meisner, landscape architect here on behalf of Brewster Harding with Riverbank LLC and their property is 370 U.S. Route 1. So um, we were actually before the board last year with the same pro property and the same development uh, proposal but a different client. So that client um, did not end up purchasing the property so a new person has actually gone through and purchased the property and they're ready to develop it in the same fashion that was approved last year, but that approval has been expired. So we're here with the same proposal. Um, everybody's familiar, I'm sure, with the old Cliffs um, antique shop. That's the property. Um, if we go to the next slide. Um, Can you switch flip to the next sure. slide? So the, prop the property is a bit challenging when you're trying to meet all of the zoning requirements as well as the stream setback requirements. So it has a 75-foot stream setback as well as um, it's in the B3 zone. So we have a 35-foot front setback and then the side setbacks. So when you look at the property on a whole, I mean, it's about a, f it's almost an acre of a lot, but that, um, red hatched area is actually the only conforming developable area of that property. So it's about 3,000 square feet that meets all of the yard, side yard, front yard setbacks as well as the stream setback. So you can see the existing building footprint on there which is about nine feet over the front yard setback. And then you can see that it's well within the 75 foot stream setback. So what, what we're here before the board uh, to present is um, the next slide. It is a proposal to um, meet, the short, meet the stream setback to the best 
abilities uh, while getting the property uh, better within the zoning requirements. So what we've done is held the left right hand corner of the existing building and put a new building within that area and meeting the front, front yard setback. So it's a, we've reduced the square footage of the building by 200 square feet, um, squared it off so we don't have that little leg sticking out the back and uh, met the front yard setback. Uh, our next step would be going into the site plan, which would include a whole stormwater element, which would improve environmental um, aspects of the site, including you know, water quality flowing into the stream from the parking areas. Currently, it's all gravel. There's not a lot of erosion on the site. It's relatively flat, which is good. But still, the, you know, whatever stormwater treatment is proposed for this new development will definitely help with uh, the quality of water running off into the stream. In addition, there will be requirements for landscaping, so there will be buffering requirements and things like that that will take place, which will also help with the environmental aspects as well as uh, general aesthetics for the site, which it certainly could use some improvements in that, uh, in that area. Um, the next slide just shows what the owner is looking at doing. Uh, it's a one-story building. Uh, it will have two tenants on both sides, one on each side, uh, keeping it you know, relatively simple because it's a relatively small site. Um, he's not sure whether, I believe there is an existing basement portion to this building. Uh, he's going to evaluate that uh, during the demol demolition and see whether they're going to just do a slap on grade or maintain some portion of a basement within this uh, building. So that's what we're hoping that you will consider. Um, we think it's the best option, and I'm sure the people that have <coughs> recently invested in adjacent properties would greatly appreciate this, as well as everyone who drives by every day and sees that poor building. I think it's been vacant since it, at least 2015, so it's, it's definitely in need of some care. Um, and we're looking forward to your discussion. All right, thank you very much. Um, does the board have any questions Mr. at Chair, this time? One question. Yes, Mr. Sutton. I noticed that when you designed the location of the new building, you adhered to the road setback, but you, so you moved it close, in effect, leaving the stream setback the same. Is there any reason why you chose to adhere to the road setback and not move it further away from the stream? Because the stream setback is obviously a 75-foot setback, right. and perhaps more important environmentally than the road setback. Um, I don't believe the town gives you the option to, uh, to encroach within that setback. So we had to adhere to the front yard setback. Even though the existing building currently yeah, because we're not building in the exact same footprint. That building they've evaluated, it has asbestos in it. It absolutely cannot be renovated. So we had to tear down, they're planning to tear down the building. So that was the reason why a new building would have to adhere to the front yard setback. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Mr. Bonner? I guess um, as I read the, um, the, the, the statute requirements, um, is the property connected to sewer or is there a septic system on site that will be sewer. updated or changed? It's connected to sewer. Okay, gotcha. Um, and um, is there any, have you identified or is there any awareness that there will be environmental remediation that might be within the, the shoreland setback or that might be in anywhere on the property? I, the history, this was an odd property going back to when I was a five-year-old, so it's been around forever. But um, just wondering if there's been a soil analysis or if there's anything that might have been dumped on the property or anything like that. Not that... That, not that we're aware of. Okay. We just know what's inside the building right now because they've gotten a demolition permit. So we know that there's asbestos in the building. Okay, thank um, you. You know, we, we will be basically not disturbing a whole lot of the, the site. We're going to pretty much keep that the way it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the board? I, I personally have a question, uh, if you don't mind. I know the board doesn't work on precedent, but as you mentioned uh, as part of your testimony, you um, this sort of coming back in front of the board and it was previously uh, approved. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing what cha what potentially has changed to the building footprint and the placement on the site from uh, that previous uh, appearance. Nothing at all. It's actually exactly the same. 
Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, unless there's any other questions, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, could we open uh, this up to public comment? Sure. Anyone like to weigh in on this? Not hearing any, we will close public comments. Uh, Mr. Um, Longstaff, were there any comments from the town or calls, written correspondence? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, we did not receive any written comments. I did not receive any phone calls. All right, thank you very much. So at this time, um, is there perhaps a motion from the board? First, I'd like to make a comment. Since I was on the board the last time, this was approved. Uh, and this does uh, bring the property more in compliance because of the front setback, uh, which is a very important factor. And there's not much you can do with this in terms of what's buildable on that lot. And we did already approve this. I know we, we don't rely on precedents, but uh, it's basically this is the same thing virtually that uh, we approved uh, in, that, in 2020. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm very much in favor. I uh, um, make a motion that we approve. All right, thank you, Mr. Borg. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Pronger. Uh, going down. Um, Mr. Borg, how would you vote? Yes. Mr. Pronger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. And I'll vote in the affirmative as well. All right. Yes. Pass. Thank you. Next up, we're going to be hearing appeal number 2719, the miscellaneous appeal by PB, uh, PGB Holdings at 92 Broadturn Road, Assessor's Map R045, Lot 3A. If you wouldn't mind, uh, please approaching the podium. And to start, uh, would you mind saying your name and, um, and your address for the record? Sure. Uh, my name is Paul Beaver, and I live at 21 Owens Way here in Scarborough. What brings you here this evening? Um, so I am looking to purchase uh, 92 Broadturn Road. Um, it's zoned as rural farmland. Uh, I'm looking to uh, get a non-conforming use uh, permit so that I can op operate my landscape business there. Um, there's currently uh, already a non-conforming use permit for, uh, I believe it's for the tenant um, that's in uh, that space as of now. Um, they're a, a food and beverage distributor. Um, they'll remain there for a time, uh, but I, I'm looking to eventually um, have them move out and operate my landscaping business there. Um, the name of it is Green Care Landscape Management. Uh, we used to be in Scarborough. Um, we used to lease a space on Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, we had to move to South Portland, and I'm very excited to be coming back to Scarborough. Um, because I live here, my kids go to school here, and I really like to have my business here too. Um, so basically, you know, we will have uh, no discernible impact on traffic uh, if we're operating there. Um, we are in keeping with the neighborhood, I believe. Uh, the two doors down, uh, just before you get to the highway, if you're headed from Route 1 out to this property, um, two doors down is uh, absolutely complete property services. Um, and then uh, to the right, there's a uh, Claude and Son seal coating. Um, so there are businesses of a similar nature already uh, in the area. Um, we plan to do a lot of imp uh, property improvements. Um, so we'll put in fencing uh, along the two sides there. Um, we'll be, we're looking to demolish a portion of the building and build a new uh, a new building in its place, like within the same footprint. Um, of course, the new building will conform to, um, you know, all existing uh, regulations and, and, and um, everything we need to do. Uh, currently, the, the building that's there now is way out of compliance in many ways. Um, it's old. It was built in 1927. Um, so we'll bring it up to, you know, ADA compliance and, and all that. Um, we'll be... Uh, I, I have a, a great affinity for uh, environmental improvements. Um, so I'll be putting lots of solar panels uh, on the roofs. Um, 
which will power heat pumps, and that'll be our heating and cooling, uh, our main source of heating and cooling there. Um, I'm going to be building the new building out of uh, carbon negative panels. Um, so, you know, I'm very interested in, in overall improving uh, both the function and the aesthetic of the property um, so that we can operate our landscaping business from there. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it, if you have any questions. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you happen to have your responses to the special exemptions? It's part of your application? All right. So it's part of uh, tonight's uh, testimony. We're just going to review those and ask you to read those into the record, if possible. And I'll uh, just take a moment to say that. Uh, I'll express to the rest of the board, after we read each of these, um, these items, should you have any questions relevant to that item, um, this would be a great time to ask those questions of the appellants. All right. So to start off with, uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects to its design or operation. And I'm my response. If possible, possible, yes. Um, I think we specifically responded to each question in turn, but um, just trying to find my response. I'm sorry. Uh, where you know it uh, starts with I think it might be on page nine of your application. Yeah, I'm <laughs> scrolling through. There we go. Okay, sorry. Uh, Green Kale will not operate in a manner inconsistent with the intent of rural farmland zoning. Uh, we will not be creating any unsanitary conditions of any sort and will have no impact on the air or water quality of the property and surrounding areas. Uh, other than lawn fertilization materials, which are managed by a licensed applicator um, and uh, stored safely inside and not used on site, uh, any material on site will be organic in nature, such as mulch stone, sand, gravel, and stored neatly in dedicated bins. Uh, our salt for winter application will be stored in a hoop house uh, behind the building footprint. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Mr. Pronger. I did have a question. This might be more for um, staff than for the applicant. And I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, given this response, and also given the general nature of the application, why is this a non-conforming use in the rural farming district? I have a very detailed answer for you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, I didn't write the ordinance. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, and I, I'll be honest. I went through the ordinance. I went through this, and and, yeah, and given its nature as a fundamentally, an, if not agricultural, certainly a horticultural business, it struck me as odd that this was required. So, um, so I have no issue with this. It was just a question for staff. But mm -hmm. yeah, with that in mind, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the response for staff, and we can continue. Sorry, right, thank sorry. you, Mr. Brown. Uh, any other board questions? Yes, Ms. Stafford. Uh, I'm curious about how many trucks he's going to have. That's a great question. Uh, so I, I currently have a fleet of a dozen trucks. Uh, about three quarters of them are taken home by uh, upper management. Um, so I'll have at any given time maybe four to six trucks on the site. Um, like I said, but it, four of them definitely go home with the guys and then um, in the winter time most all of them uh, are kept with the uh, employees and they'll only come and go a couple of times a day yeah so we stagger our, our leaving in the morning uh, between 6 30 and 7 30 8 o'clock um, we have one crew of two or three uh, team members that leave at a time uh, and then when they're done with their particular project for the day, they come back. So they don't all come back at the same time either. Yes, Mr. Um, what's the, for the parking, mm -hmm. what is the surface that you're going to provide in the parking lot? Will it capture the leaks from the vehicles? And yeah, uh, we, I still have to uh, assess what the best possible surface is uh, to improve. Right now, it's... Uh, pretty much just a mud pit. <laughs> um, so we need to bring in some aggregate and, uh, you know, we'll of course do so. You're going to address that. We are going to address it, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Mr. Spark? You know, I understand this project has already been before the planning board 
uh, for for their approval, which they did approve. Yes. And they presented it back to us mm -hmm. uh, strictly for the purpose of getting a zoning uh, exception here uh, for special uh, use yeah. in this area. So a lot of the things that were you know questions that are coming up right now are really not relevant. That's really a planning board issue. Yeah. Right. Any other specific questions to just, add? just to clarify on that statement? Mr. Chair, if I may, yes. it wasn't approved by planning board. They gave a positive advisory opinion. I'm it still sure. has to go back to planning board yes, for approval. It will yeah. go back to the yeah. planning board for final yep. approval. Yeah. Just, Just wanted to clarify for, for the record. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. Longstaff. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Any other questions for A on the board? <clears throat> not hearing any, we'll move on to B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or possession traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Green Care will not create any unsafe vehicular or pedestrian conditions. Our trucks and equipment will leave in the morning and return in the afternoon. Uh, there will be no foot traffic and no retail operation that would result in pedestrian traffic. Uh, this property will be used for employees only. Right, thank you. Are there questions specific to this from the board? I asked it early. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Snow. <laughs> not hearing any, we'll move on to C. The proposed use will not create uh, public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or fire, uh, police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, Greek Care does not envision this property being used in a manner that is very different than rural farmland use. Uh, we use similar equipment. Uh, we use similar equipment, and our operating hours are consistent with that of a farming business. Uh, we do not have any history of requiring municipal support from fire, police, or EMS, uh, and there should be no greater degree of such support needed. All right, thank you. Any uh, questions from the board on this one? I'm not seeing any. I do have one myself, uh, just a quick follow-up. It was mentioned earlier tonight that there's someone that's specific to the lawn fertilizer, but with regard to fire protection, are there any concerns about um, uh, internal fire or where the fertilizer is kept? Uh, currently, I don't have any concerns. Um, fertilizer is, uh, that we use is generally not, uh, you know, combustible in nature or anything like that. Um, and when I go to build the new structure, um, it would be, you know, up to date with all the current building ordinances. And if the planning board uh, sees fit that I have to have a sprinkler system or anything like that in any particular area or throughout the building, I will do so. Sounds good. Thank you. Next up, D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Uh, our operations do not result in sedimentation or erosion. In fact, if there is any sedimentation or erosion existing on the property at present, uh, we are uniquely qualified to manage that issue. Uh, we have the expertise to professionally manage this property and approve it uh, when needed. All right, thank you. Questions from the board? I asked it earlier. Not seeing any others, we'll move on to E. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, Green Care's operation is similar and consistent with that of a farming operation in terms of equipment and workday hours. Our difference is that once our crews leave in the morning, there's very little activity on the site um, during the day and none on the weekends. After they return in the afternoon or early evening, there is no activity on site. Uh, the only exception to this is during the winter months uh, when there is a snow and ice event. Uh, at those times, our crews may muster on site at any time. We take care to do so efficiently and with consideration of our neighbors. Uh, the physical size of our operation will be within the footprint of the current structures. We do plan on removing the woodworking facility uh, as a cost to retrofit to our use. Uh, as the cost to retrofit to our use and to the current condition of the building, uh, prohibits us from using it as is. We will be constructing a new carbon negative building using structurally insulated um, with carbon recaptured materials uh, panels um, and installing solar, solar panels on the roof. The new building will sit well within the footprint of the existing structure and will not add to the density of development. Uh, we will be upgrading the well and septic and bringing those systems to current standards. We'll also be erecting a fence and buffering plantings on the east and west side of the property to shield for sound and improve the visual impact of the property. We will also be landscaping the property and drastically improving curb appeal uh, and the view from the road. All right, thank you. Any questions related to this item from the board? Not seeing any, we'll move on to F. 
If located in the shoreland, uh, shoreland zone as depicted on the Town of Scarborough official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance. We um, don't see that as a, applicable all right, in this case. Mr. Longstead? I can verify it's not in the shoreland zone. All right, thank you very much. Moving on to G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be, carry, uh, to be able to carry out the proposed use. Um, yeah, just uh, we wrote to see the attached purchase and sale agreement. Thank you. All right, does uh, anyone on the board have any questions regarding this item? Should be included in the packet. Not seeing any. We'll move on to H. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Uh, Green Care Landscape Management is solvent, has cash in hand, and financing in place to comply with these conditions and make the improvements to the property as outlined. We have the technical expertise and broad base of vendor relationships that make us uniquely qualified to manage any conditions that may present themselves. Our plan for the property is comprehensive and we are confident that each condition or potential condition is addressed here or can be addressed as needed. All right, thank you. Questions from the board on this one? Yes, Mr. Fagner? Just you mentioned that the, um, you're currently based in South Portland. Are you, is your ability to improve the property, et cetera, contingent on the ability to sell a property in South Portland or? Are no, you... I currently rent with a 90 day out. Okay, got it. Great, thank you. Uh, not seeing any. I do have one. Um, it was mentioned as part of the uh, application and shown on the screen that it was intended to have some fencing on the edges of the property. Mm -hmm. um, while we have yet to hear from the public, should there be any concerns from the adjacent abutters, um, such as vegetation, sounds as if that would be something that you're more than willing and capable of providing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so not seeing any other questions, we'll move on to I. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, as we uh, outlined above, the Green Cares uh, operation is consistent with the operation of any farm. Uh, in fact, our operation should prove to be less impactful than, working, than a working farm. Our hours of operation are mm -hmm. less than a working farm and will generate less noise. Uh, we feel that with these factors uh, and the planned property improvements that we intend to implement, uh, our operation will be a welcome addition to the area. Uh, and as I mentioned before, there are uh, a couple of businesses right in the area uh, that are very similar to ours. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the board on this last one? One, one quick Mr. question. Are there any residents uh, of letters? Yes. Uh, uh, both sides um, are residential properties. Um, one of them I'm considering purchasing. Um, the, uh, the other one is, uh, I believe, just a set of uh, apartment buildings. Um, and so, yeah, there are, there are residential neighbors on either side. Um, and we would be, of course, taking great care to just improve the property and, and make, it, uh, make it better for them on either side. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Stevenson? I do have a question. Is, is the smell from the fertilizer going to... There's no get a problem. Okay, I didn't it's, know um, if there was a smell. I guess is my yeah, question. Yeah, no, that's a great is question. It, or not, anything that you use is that going to be a problem for residents? No, it, it shouldn't be at all. Um, we uh, we bring back grass clippings at times. Um, sometimes we have to turn them, and then re then screen them and remove them. Um, those activities can create a scent sometimes, depending on how hot it is outside. Um, but it, it dissipates within like an hour. Um, and it would be, it's, it'd be back further on the property from, from the front road. Um, and the fertilizers that we store are just, are they, they're in containers and they're, they're, they have to be stored inside uh, a metal container and, and managed by our licensed applicators. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any questions. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Awesome. Um, next up, we'll open it up to public comments. Do you want mind saying your name and uh, address? <laughs> A little familiar with the process. Leroy Crockett, 17 Imperial Lane. Uh, I've known Paul, Paul Bieber for quite a while. He's a stellar employer. Uh, he does a lot of community work. He basically has been trying to get back into this community for a while. The property that he left, he didn't need to do it but he made it 
10 times better than it was. He re-excavated it. He put new gravel down. He put a nice picnic area out front and left it for the people that were going to be renting it from him. He's very aware of traffic down there. He's aware of schools. He's aware of school buses. His people go out of their way. I mean, they've done work for me. They do work with me because I do their trash business for them. But he's very willing and capable of doing whatever he needs to do to make this property better. This came before the board, I think, I don't know, Brian, five years ago, maybe? maybe three. three. three? Years. Okay. And I know one of the things then was the fence, and that's one of the things Paul was definitely willing to do right away in vegetation and stuff. He wants to make sure his neighbors are taken care of and that he doesn't impair them at all, but makes the property better and also makes it more appealing because if anybody's driven by it, it, it needs some work. And he's got the capabilities to do it not only by putting it in the same footprint, but also landscaping it and making it look very nice, which he does a wonderful job. You should see his yard. It's like one of the best yards I've ever seen. He made my yard, which I didn't think I could grow grass in, actually grow grass. So he's done a wonderful job for me. He does a wonderful job for his community, his employees, and he's going to be great to have back in the community. I think you'll see he'll be able to give him back to Scarborough in many ways. He's already done that in some other areas. But he also has the capability, and he doesn't want his employees to be impacting anything. So he's very really well aware of that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Not hearing anything? We'll close public comment. Um, Mr. Longstaff, anything? Any written comments? Uh, no, no written comments, no phone calls. Um, if I could, Mr. Chair, one, one question that um, I know that in discussions with Mr. Beaver, I had asked this question, and I didn't hear him address it tonight, and I, I don't know if he has any different answer than he did when I spoke with him, but there's already a beverage company that's leasing space on the property. I don't know if that's going to continue or not. It might be something that the board just wants to be aware of, whether that use that was approved uh, three or four years ago is going to remain or if, if that's going to go away, and I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear anything on that uh, from this presentation. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Longstaff. If you wouldn't mind, um, would it be possible to address that? Can yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the, the existing lease uh, was extended through September of 2023. Uh, in my discussions with them, uh, they are searching for a building. They've kind of outgrown the building that they're in. Um, and so they're, they're, they asked me if I would be okay with them leaving early, which I would frankly jump for joy if they did. So, um, yeah, they, they'll be leaving at least by... Uh, September 2023, if not sooner. And, and just to tag on to that for the board's information, that's fine because that was an approved uh, expansion of that non-conforming use that came before the board. If that goes away, that doesn't mean that Mr. Beaver has to come back. It's just that that, that part of it goes away and his business takes over uh, you know, the entire site that way. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Right. So at this point, Sorry about that. Um, we'll go into... Uh, board comments and uh, findings of fact. Uh, once again, uh, as I mentioned earlier tonight, uh, as we respond to each of these, I may call on one of, uh, one of the board members to do a general summary and then open it up to other board members to add additional comment so as to not uh, spend too much time uh, going through uh, if, if our board members don't have anything further to add. So with that being said, um, Let's take a moment to discuss uh, the first special exemption A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful, uh, unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects to its design or operation. Do you mind, Mr. Bohr? Uh, certainly. <clears throat> other than uh, lawn fertilizers and winter salt and sand, all materials are organic or inert uh, and stored in bins to prevent them from uh, leaving the site. Fertilizers are managed by licensed applicators and stored inside the building. Salt is stored in a hoop house to prevent leaching on the site. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Does any other board members have anything further to add? No, but Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment at the end of the session about, or sort of in our general comments at the very end of the meeting, about sure. potentially recommending something about horticultural uses in the RF zone. Um, and a discussion of that because it's again to my earlier point it seems like this use is actually more conforming to the RF designation than prior uses of the site um, and maybe that's something that we could recommend to the town council or to um, the ordinance committee to, to address in the in the in the in the ordinance so All right. 
Thank you very much. All right, so not hearing anything more on that one. Um, go just to a quick vote on this specific item before moving on to Part B, if at all possible. So, uh, Mr. Borg, how would you vote for yes. it? Uh, Mr. Fronger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. And I would vote in the affirmative as well. All right, moving on to B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mr. Fronger? Aye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Would it be possible just to get a quick summary? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. We went from uh, yeah, my, we're my, my jumping apologies. back and forth. Yeah. I apologize. Um, no, I, I think the applicant has demonstrated that this is in line with certainly a conforming use for the property, which would be a, a, a farm or a working farm um, a, a, um, a, a thing. And he's also uh, described the sort of morning versus afternoon versus daytime usage, which will not create um, unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions. So I think the, this has been uh, demonstrated to our satisfaction. Well, thank you very much. Uh, do any other board members have further thoughts to add to this? I'm not seeing any or hearing any. So with that, uh, we'll take a quick vote on this one. B, the proposed use will not, oh, sorry. Um, proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Frohlinger? I didn't make so clear earlier. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Mr. Silkman? Yes. All right, and I vote in the affirmative as well. Uh, next up, just a quick <coughs> summary. Um, the proposed use will not create public safety problems that would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, as we heard this evening, uh, the um, the uh, the property will be used in such a manner that's not very different from farm and use um, with similar equipment, operating hours that are consistent with farming business. Uh, the support of fire, police, and EMS has not been needed in the past with previous um, operating at other locations. It's not anticipated at this location. Sensitive materials are stored in metal containers interior to the building or um, and should the need by the planning board determine additional fire protection is required, then that um, sounds as if that will be included in the future design. Uh, so I don't see any additional concerns with this, but I open this up to the board for any other comments. Make a quick comment. Given that the prior use of the property is for woodworking, which is tends to be a, a fairly high fire danger activity. This would seem to reduce the potential fire um, risk activity on the site and, uh, and, and therefore would serve to reinforce the applicant's case. All right, thank you, Mr. Fowler. Anyone else have further comments to add to this? Not seeing any, we'll do a quick vote on C as well. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by the existing use of the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fronger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote in the affirmative as well. Next up, D. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Would it be possible to get a quick summary, um, Mr. Bork? Uh, yes. Uh, as proposed, as property management professionals, the applicant has expertise to identify, prevent, and correct any sedimentation and erosion that could impact the water quality. And the site plan uh, shows dedicated storage bins to prevent accidental earth disturbance that can lead to unanticipated erosion and sedimentation issues. All right, thank you, Mr. Bork. Uh, any other board members have something further to add? Not hearing any or seeing any, we'll take a quick vote on D. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fronger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote I as well. Moving on to E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, Mr. Uh, Frohlinger, would it be possible to get your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, um, I think the applicant has demonstrated that this is indeed in, in, in the, compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, while there are residential properties abutting on either side, um, it's clear, and I appreciate um, Mr. Crockett's uh, testimony, 
um, I can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm appreciating Mr. Craig's testimony. Um, uh, to the to the fact that the, the the applicant also has a history of improving the site such that it will make the neighborhood and neighborhood abutters um, uh, have a have a have a better um, uh, neighborhood use. So I think this has been demonstrated and and, uh, and deserves a, an I vote from the from the board. Right, thank you, Mr. Fowler. Any other board comments on this one? Not seeing any, we'll take a quick vote. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, intensity of development. Mr. Fork? Yes. Ms. Fronger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silfman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Uh, F, uh, if located in the Shoreland Zone as depicted in the uh, Town of Scarborough official Shoreland Zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the Town of Sh Scarborough Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, as we heard from Mr. Longstaff, is, um, is not applicable. So we'll just take a quick vote on this one. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Prollinger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Sutherland? Yes. I vote aye as well. Uh, G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. As included in our packet and discussed this evening, um, there is a uh, deed and intent to uh, purchase, if not already purchased, the property um, and discussed. Uh, the appellant has previously worked out of Scarborough with, um, and is still working out of South Portland, so um, has great interest and ability to carry out the use. Um, so with that being said, anybody else have any further add for this item? Not hearing any. Let's take a quick uh, vote. The appellant has a sufficient right to an interest in the site. The proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Mr. Bork? Yes. Ms. Fraunger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Uh, Mr. Silkman? Yes. And I vote aye as well. H. The applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. It was discussed tonight that. Um, has cash in hand, financial ability, uh, as I mentioned in the previous uh, statement, uh, has been working successfully out of Scarborough and South Portland, will push to move back to Scarborough. So ability to uh, perform the use at the site, um, but also for any, um, any conditions imposed. So with that, uh, does the board have any thoughts on this one? Anything further to add? Not hearing any, uh, I'll take a quick vote. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fraunner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote aye as well. And uh, aye, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Mr. Bork, could we get your thoughts on this one? Yes, the uh, applicant's operation is similar to farming activities, except uh, that less activity will occur on the property, uh, which in turn means less noise during the uh, daytime hours. Snow removal um, is the exception, uh, but also an activity uh, that occurs you know, on many properties in Maine during the, uh, the uh, non-daytime hours. I would add also that uh, the applicant has shown a willingness to put substantial buffers between your property and the abutting residential properties. All right, thank you, Mr. Bork. Are there any other board comments on this one? Not seeing any. Uh, the proposed use will, not, uh, will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Fonger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. And I'd vote aye as well. All right, at this point, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, Mr. Bork, how would you vote? Yes. Mr. Fraunner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote aye as well. With that, we pass. Thanks for returning to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a community volunteer. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Nice seeing you. All right, next, we're going to move to appeal number 2720, a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Custom Concepts Inc. on behalf of Eddie and Dulce Garon, 30 Pillsbury Drive, Assessor's Map, U021, Lot 70.
glad you're going old school, Mike, because I think I'm out of uh, <laughs> space on my computer. It won't even open up PDFs anymore. Oh, right. very happy. You came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Would you mind stating your name and your address for the record? Absolutely. I'm Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architects. And what brings you here? I am here on behalf of my clients, um, the Guyron family of 30 Pillsbury Drive on Pine Point. They're requesting a limited setback, a uh, limited reduction of yard size to allow for an addition for their large and growing family. Uh, due to the, ex the location of the existing structure on the property, um, and some unique features of the existing home, we find ourselves here before you asking for this relief. Um, this parcel is located on the northern side of Pine Point. It contains an existing home, a driveway, uh, a couple exterior decks, and some landscaping. Um, it's relatively flat. We have a new current survey on the property, um, and it is not located within the shoreland zone. So initially, we looked into expanding above the addition, uh, above the existing L off the back of the house. Made sense, common, common sense approach. Um, but upon some further inspection, we found that that portion of the home, it's an addition that sits on a foundation system that we feel would not bear the weight of another floor. We also looked into expanding off the side, off the back. Um, but due to the building coverage and other lot limitations, which are maxed out, um, we did not find any practical options. So we looked into expanding vertically over the existing front portion of the home um, as it seems like a practical approach. Uh, this original section of the home sits on a really stable full foundation uh, and the frame of the home appears to be in, in very good condition. The only wish issue with this of course is the fact that the front of the existing home currently sits over the setback. It's kind of angled, as you can see from my highlighted lines. So I looked into several options to develop, to develop a new third floor level that does not extend as far. I tried a couple options where I was extending up towards here, but not within this zone. Um, but it simply only allowed for about 15 feet of depth for me to work with. And once I tried to design a new stairway in there and a hallway, it just wasn't enough space to justify the expense of taking the roof off and going up. Uh, further, the existing stair that leads from the main floor to the second floor happens to be in the front left corner, right here. In terms of efficiency, it always makes sense to stack stairways when possible, um, you know, just to, to be efficient with space. Uh, but doing so places us in this position to ask for this relief. So the design as presented uh, in your packet um, is our most efficient and practical approach to give the Gyrons the additional space that they, that they need. Um, basically, the, the roof of the main portion of the house, the front section, would be removed um, to allow for construction of a new floor on top of it directly above the floors below, um, as well as a whole new roof system. But there's two small areas. Oh, I do want to point out there's two small areas, one on the main floor and one on the second floor, which currently overhang towards the road. Um, we would actually cut those off and permanently remove those. Um, they're small, but it would essentially help, help make that section of the house more compliant by removing those couple feet. So please note that the proposed third floor would not extend beyond the current floor below it. Um, in fact, the current roof, when you really get into detail with AutoCAD and surveys, in fact, the current roof extends beyond the potential 10-foot relief um, just by a few inches too close to the road. So therefore, I've actually designed this new roof to be a few inches back and make sure that we would be in compliant with the 10 feet that hopefully we're allowed to get. Um, and working through this with Brian, um, you know, these, these changes would comply with the height limitations in that area 
and uh, building and lot coverages. So uh, with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, does the board have any questions before we get to specific items? No. All right, so you know, with a similar approach to the last one you may have just heard, uh, we're going to read through some of your written responses, just to read them into the record. Uh, just ask if you have that in front of you, too. Um, so product description and the various questions, A, B, and C. Pages three through five. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so, um, I just ask that you read uh, your written response, but you're more than welcome to expand upon it uh, as you see fit. Sure. So, A, general, uh, generally describe the project and why a limited reduction of yard size is going to be needed. Uh, the Diamond family is growing and they need additional space. Given the existing building coverage, we must go up vertically rather than horizontally. The existing L off the back of the house was not built to the standard of the front section. Therefore, we are recommending to build an addition floor onto the front of the section of the home. Unfortunately, the front section of the home is within the front setback, so we ask this relief to allow us to construct directly above the existing footprint within that front setback area. Thank you. Does the board have any questions with regard to this? No. Um, if it would be possible for B, just to list the exact dimensions of the reduction requested. I think you may have already mentioned it, but for the front or the side. Give me, I know I have that. Yeah, so specifically request the following. For the third floor only. On the left or the westerly side, approximately 5 foot 11. On the right or easterly side, approximately 9 foot 11 and 3 quarter. <laughs> it's not very approximate. Um, total area, approximately 305 square feet. Board, have any questions on this one? Uh, move on to uh, C. Uh, number one, the existing buildings or structures on the lot in which the limited reduction of yard size re uh, residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Yes, according to town records, the home was constructed around 1960. Okay, Mr. Longstaff, is that something that could be confirmed? Mm -hmm. All right, I can confirm that. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Two, the request for reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, we believe so. The property, property will remain a single flam, family residence and allow the Guyron family to all be together to enjoy their home in similar fashion as other properties. Thank you. Any questions from the board with this one? Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently <coughs> applicable yard size requirements. No, not in a practical way that I could find. Um, due to the existing building coverage, we cannot extend horizontally with an addition. Due to the unknown quality of the foundation of the existing L off the rear of the house, we are not comfortable with adding loading to that. In addition, the existing stair is located in the front left corner of the house. The most efficient way to access a new floor is to extend that staircase vertically, and that is the portion of the home currently over the front setback. Therefore, I feel that the most practical approach for additional space is to add onto the front section of the home as proposed. Thank you. Questions from the board? And four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from are greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. No, they will not. Uh, many of the similar properties in the immediate area are of similar scale to the proposed design. And I did provide some aerial photos to help support that. So Mr. Longstaff pulls those up. Any questions from the board? Oh, item five, please. Oh, one moment. Nothing on, nothing on number four. Okay, so number five then. 
The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No, they have not. Any questions from the Board with this last one? Uh, hearing any, uh, thank you for your time. Oh, Mr. Long, uh, Mr. Frangler. And I apologize. This actually probably was for number one. I forgot to ask it. Um, uh, the property was built in 1960. Were, have there been improvements, or have the, has the zoning board had to, had to apply on anything since then for subsequent renovations in the 60 years since it was built? I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's been any variances granted. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm sure, there's probably a building permit or two. I say 60 years is a long time, and, and, and so I'm wondering if they were something actually, happened. The same owners were actually in front of the board, probably before you were on the board a few years ago, um, for a, um, a, a different type of addition onto the front of the house. And I think it was, it was a practical difficulty uh, variance that was denied at that time. Gotcha. Okay. Just, just curious. 60 years is a long time to go without any yeah. improvements, so yeah. just curious. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, that's I haven't had many improvements in that time. <laughs> <laughs> that will open it up to public comment. Probably do for a few. Anyone like to speak on behalf of this bill? Not seeing or hearing any, we'll close public comment. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, is there any written or phone calls for this bill? We did not receive any written comments, or uh, uh, I don't believe anybody's here to speak. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so we uh, will move on to board's discussion, findings of facts, and if possible, take a similar approach <coughs> to the last IPO where we'll do a general summary of each. Uh, feel free to weigh in. That will be your opportunity to add to the, the findings of facts. Um, and then we'll do a vote and move on. So with that being said, uh, I don't believe it's necessary to do the project description or circumstances, so we'll move on to C1. The existing buildings or structures on the lot in which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is vacant, non-conforming lot of record. We've heard tonight that uh, Mr. Longstaff can confirm this, but is there any other additional um, comments about this item? All right, uh, so with that, Mr. Borg, how would you vote on this one? Yes. Mr. Pronger? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote, in that for, uh, I'd vote aye as well. All right. So the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, Mr. Fork, would you mind sharing your thoughts on this one? Yes, the applicant uh, claims the expansion is needed to accommodate a growing family. All right, thank you. Are there other thoughts um, or discussion for the second one? All right, not hearing any or seeing any from the board. I will take a vote on this one. Uh, Mr. Bork? Yes. Uh, Mr. Flanger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. I vote aye as well. Uh, three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical con uh, to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new uh, structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Mr. Freiner, do you mind sharing your thoughts on this one? Sure. I, I, I appreciate the uh, applicant's um, uh, 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 agent's comments here. Um, I, I think they've demonstrated that, number one, they've thoughtfully considered alternatives um, and that they proved to be impractical due to the back portion of the home being unable to support a similar conforming um, a, a vertical um, expansion because of the, the foundation issues um, and the obvious efficiency issues of locating the staircase concurrent with the existing staircase and, and making that that um, that that being practical um, given <clears throat> the nature of a lot of these properties in pine point and other um, historic sort of village neighborhoods the, um, the conforming space on the property is obviously very constricted and, and forces us into considering these in different ways. But I think they've demonstrated that this is the most practical approach. So I would recommend a yes vote on this. Right, thank you, Mr. Fryer. Other thoughts from the board? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I would just have one. I, I think given that the third floor is not further encroaching on the street, 
I think that decision about building the third floor is a reasonable one. I think if they were requesting a further encroachment, I think we'd probably ask them to look more carefully at the rear of the building to check on that foundation. I mean, there are fixes that can be done. It can be cantilevered over the existing foundation you know, with support structures. It wouldn't cost a lot of money. But given that we're not further encroaching, I think it's reasonable, the action that they've taken. All right, thank you, Mr. Bork. Yeah, to that, I would add that uh, it actually makes it more conforming only by a small amount. So it's within 10 feet, which we can approve. Thank you, Mr. Bork. Um, I'd just like to uh, express appreciation uh, for some of the architectural uh, information presented as part of the application this evening. Helps to understand the calculations and the intent. Um, so with that, so we'll take a, a vote on this one. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fronger? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts or effects uh, and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Uh, um, Mr. I can, Bork. I can take that one. Mr. Silkman. I, I, I live down there and walk by this house pretty much every evening. So <laughs> I think the, the proposal that they're proposing, uh, the architectural drawing that they're proposing is completely in conformance with all of the existing renovations that are being done in that area of Pine Point. <clears throat> we don't have pictures, but I can assure you that what they're proposing is well within the scope of what's happening around that neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Slipman. Any other, Mr. Moore? Yes, I would add that the uh, uh, the applicant has uh, provided photographs of the other buildings nearby to show that uh, this fits right in with other properties um, adjacent to it. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any other thoughts? Not seeing any or hearing any. Uh, Mr. Bork, how would you vote for number four? Yes. Mr. Fogner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of any large and expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction yard size is requested, so the Board of Appeals is not considering an after effect application. We were informed this evening that this is not the case, um, but uh, are there any other thoughts from the board before we're taking the vote? Mr. Silkman, have they started construction on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> No, they have not. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll take a quick vote, Mr. Borg. Yes. Mr. Fogner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Sluckman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Uh, with, with that, is there a motion? So I move it. And is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. Uh, one last vote, uh, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fogner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Sluckman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. It passes. Thank you. Right, next up, we're going to be hearing appeal number 2721, a limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Custom Concepts Inc. on behalf of Kirk and Daniel, uh, Kirk Bartlett and Daniel Foley. Three drafts for street, assessor's map U026, lot 46. Uh, but before we begin, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I would like to um, excuse myself or recuse myself, I'm not sure what I should say, but um, uh, uh, refrain from participating with the board on this one. Um, for those who aren't aware, I live at 8 Jasper Street, which is directly across the street from the property, and therefore I'd be yeah, exactly high. Um, I, I'd feel a little uncomfortable um, uh, opining on this as a board member. So I will take my position over there, and I'll be right back. All right, thank you very much. Um, and do I need to say that I will be commenting on this publicly? Or uh, can I just do that when it comes up? If, you, if you'd like to comment when public comment opens up, I believe you're more than welcome to. Gotcha. Okay. You'll well, be a recuse at this point. Uh, and with that, I uh, will elevate uh, Ms. Stevenson to a, a full voting member for this appeal. Um, with that, <laughs> we'll get started. Um, go ahead. Uh, Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architects. Um, for this project, I'm here on behalf of the Barrett and Foley family, partially behind me here of 3 Jasper Street. Um, I'm requesting a limited reduction of yard, side, yard size 
to allow for the reconstruction of the frame of their home as well as an addition. And due to the specific needs of the Barrett family, which I'll get into, in addition to the location of the existing structure on the property, um, we find ourselves in front of the board asking for this relief. This parcel is located off of Pine Point Road and is relatively flat. Um, the existing home is a single story ranch. Uh, there's a, a deck, paved driveway, and a detached garage. So Mr. Barrett, um, unfortunately, is in need of regular supervision and in-home care due to a stroke. His daughter, Danielle, um, and family of four have decided to move into the home to provide care and support for Mr. Mr. Barrett. So a couple general points. We have a current survey on the property. It is not located within the shoreland zone. Um, and the existing foundation is in good condition. So I've worked with the, the Barrett family on several different renditions in an effort, again, to avoid coming to see you. Um, but as this survey shows, um, the front of the existing home is currently over that front setback line. Given the fact that the existing foundation and utilities seem to be worthy of saving and repurposing, um, we really don't want to remove the whole foundation and all those utilities to relocate them to be in, in, in conformance. Um, I feel that relocating the foundation and underground utilities, which are fine, um, would add significant cost to the project. One important feature beyond just more living space is the need for an attached garage um, and ramp to safely enter this home. We currently have about 17 feet of width to work with between the edge of the current house and the setback line. But given the need for the ramp to safely rise up from the main floor to the home, which is, it's up, um, we simply could not find a practical way, a layout to provide ample space for a vehicle, space to maneuver with use of a walker or a wheelchair, um, as well as the ramp to get you up into the house. Um, therefore, we needed a slightly wider garage to accomplish these goals. We did try looking at placing the garage, um, this new garage, behind the structure to be in conformance, but I, I couldn't get any sort of turning radius to, to work, not even close. So the proposed design in this one, um, the existing garage, freestanding garage, would be removed. And the existing wood frame of the, the ranch would pretty much be removed. We might be able to salvage some of the first floor, but that would be determined. Um, so this design brings us to you for relief in two separate areas, as shown here in green. Floor plan or site plan. This is sort of a side section slash elevation, just as a diagram. Uh, so we're looking for relief on the front. Our design expands vertically over the location of the existing frame. In fact, very similar to the last project, believe it or not, the existing roof overhangs just beyond that 10-foot limitation just by a few inches. That's what the CAD does for us. Um, of what uh, you know, limited reduction of size may offer. So I purposely pulled the new, new roof line in just a few inches so, so it passes the straight face test that it would comply with the 10 feet allowed, um, if so given. We also plan to minimize the existing stairs that currently extend out towards the street. Right now they stick out. Um, so those would be sort of pulled back a couple feet, probably two feet. Um, so technically, we're actually increasing this, the nonconformance by about two feet from that location. The other location we're, we're seeking request is on the side, this section here. Our design provides for that oversized garage to allow space for the vehicle and ramp system, um, as we've shown in the floor plan. Um, this includes finished space up above to allow bedroom space for Danielle and her family. As you can see on the exterior view, we purposely kept this roof line lower to minimize this impact. Right here in the center, this would be stacked up above the existing house. 
This is the pro pro's garage off the side. And again, we purposely kept this as low as possible to minimize the impact. Um, and as before, we would continue to work with, um, with Brian and code enforcement to, to make sure that we're in compliance with height limitation and building coverage limitations. As presented, this complies with, with I believe, all the regulations on the site. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. All right, thank you. Uh, before we get to the specifics, are there any questions from the board? Yes. Mr. Port? What, what is the relief that you're seeking on the side? How many feet? So it's tapered a little bit towards the front, four foot eight. Towards the back, four foot ten. Thank you. So I need uh, Mr. Silkin? <clears throat> the ramp is obviously necessary for wheelchairs, <clears throat> but it also provides additional space on the second floor. Correct. Did you look at all at whether or not you could have a, an electric lift at the end of the garage that would provide the same elevation rise? And <clears throat> would that have worked in this context, or was it at the second floor that you're really looking to be able to have available for bedroom space? Yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a great, fair question. Um, I have not had good, <laughs> I have not get, had good feedback from clients with special needs on the lifts mm -hmm. as opposed to ramps. Um, I've had clients put them in addition to ramps and tell me years later that they really only use the ramps. Um, so we, I don't even really think we discussed it as an option, to be honest with you, because a lot of people don't like them. Um, but to answer your bigger question, it was literally driven by the, the main floor, and then I simply used that space up above. Yeah. And do you know if, if you have, I don't know enough about the ADA code, but if you have an electric ramp, do you need to have a secondary access or backup power under the code? Or is an electric ramp adequate to provide, in and of itself, to provide access and entry for handicapped individuals? Yeah, so I could cite the commercial code, but for residential, I don't even think there is one. Okay. Brian, I don't Yeah, the ADA, the ADA um, accessibility standards don't actually apply to single family dwellings. I mean, it's a great tool to use to go by, but they're, they're not required to follow the ADA guidelines. Um, I, I can't even answer your question. I would think that if you had anything um, that was that dependent uh, on access through electrical power, you'd want to have a, some kind of a battery backup system in case of emergency. But I don't know that it's required. Thanks. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Silkman. Any other questions from the board? Uh, just a comment on that. You are within the five foot allowance that we can grant. Still Correct. With this design. Correct. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll take a look at the project description. So if you don't mind turning to page three of your application. You generally <coughs> describe the project and why a limited reduction of yard size is needed. Uh, Mr. Barrett is in need of full time care and Danielle and her family have decided to move into the home to, to provide this care for them. This care needs, uh, involves first floor living um, as well as ramp access. Given the location of the existing home and the property, we have tried to develop the most practical layout for their needs. Therefore, it goes into those, those two requests. I can describe them again, but <laughs> just um. Yeah, if you don't, just don't mind reading those last two sentences. Sure. Um, so we have two requests for this relief. To the right-hand side, to allow for the construction of an attached garage to include an interior ramp. And to the front, to allow for a vertical expansion over the existing footprint uh, within the front setback. Right, thank you. Any questions from the board on this first description? All right, B, what's the exact dimensions requested, uh, reduction requested? I believe you stated the, the right side, the four foot um, and it's taper, but would you mind stating the front as well? Absolutely. So specifically, the front on the left hand side would be approximately 9 foot 11. On the right hand side, approximately 9 foot 11 and a half, which is existing, oddly enough. 
um, and approximately 38 foot 8 inches across the front. Thank you. Questions from the board? Uh, next, we'll move to C1. The existing buildings or structures on the lot in which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is, is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Yes, according to town records, the home was constructed in 1962. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. Is that something you can confirm? Yep. Right. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Moving on to number two. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar, uh, similar <coughs> properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, the, the Barrett's needs for access and first floor living are similar to the use of other properties in the zoning district. Many other properties in the district have attached garages, and many other properties have two floors. The proposed garage would have, allow ample space for a vehicle and for the ramp to be enclosed by the, from the elements. Uh, the additional space on the second floor will allow space for his family to join him and provide live-in care. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board? No. Uh, number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to, uh, to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, <coughs> or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Unfortunately not. We looked into placing the garage further back and somewhat behind the current home, but the turning radius for a vehicle simply could not work. Removing the foundation and reconstructing it further back would add significant cost to the project. Regarding the second floor addition, the current home is approximately 24 foot 8 inches deep. If we designed an addition on the second floor to comply with the front setback, the new second floor would only be about 15 feet deep. Therefore, it would not be practical to go through that effort or expense for, smuch, for such a small gain of space. We did recess the, the small front porch to, re, to help respect that front issue. All right, thank you. Uh, questions or comments from the board? Uh, next, number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood would not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement? No, they will not. The, the use of the property will not change, and I believe that this project would allow the home to fit in nicely with the existing neighborhood. Thank you. Questions, comments from the board? You mentioned that, uh, oh, I, sorry, I have a just follow up. Um, you mentioned that this will fit in nicely uh, with the community and the neighborhood. Um, it also noted that pictures were attached, photos, um, are there, yeah, uh, are, there, are there any, um, I was just wondering if there are any photos included to show maybe from street views or what the conditions were around the property for one to two story structures. Um, if there aren't photos, could you speak to that? So, my apologies, no, those, those were not included. And um, there's a lot of two-story homes in this area with a lot of attached attached garages um, and even some, you know, some pretty large structures. Uh, behind it is, is, I believe this is town property, the tennis courts. Yes. Um, so in, in essence, you can see just from the scale of these, it would be very similar to some of these. Large home, very large home. Okay, thank you. As if Mr. Longstaff's pulling up the street view now. Thank you, sir. Oh, here we go. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's somebody, no, in not a, that somebody <laughs> sleeping in an armchair in that house. Is it for sale? <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so, if there aren't any questions with that one, I think I think that number five the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction yard size was requested. So that the board of appeals is not considering an after effect application. No, they have not. All right. Any questions from the board? Comments? Right. If there aren't any questions, thank you for your time. We'll open it up to public comments. 
Yes. You wouldn't mind stating your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm Peter Freilinger. I live at number eight Jasper Street, which is a, an approximate abutter across the street from the applicant's property. Um, I'll speak to a couple of things here. First off, um, most sort of recently in, in, in the memory of this, in terms of looking at adjacent properties, um, there are two two-story homes directly across the, ho um, the street, including one of which has an elevated roof line relative to other houses on the street and a very large barn which is used as a garage. So in terms of the bulk and massing of the property, uh, of the proposed structures on the property, I think this is in line with the neighborhood that, that we live in and, uh, and, and, and the board can feel comfortable on that score. Um, the other two points I'd make is the board has considered in, in past sessions similar sort of additions in properties that were built at a similar time, the 1960s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, on smaller properties um, that don't necessarily have um, the same space within the conforming envelope. Um, but they've allowed, the, the board has, I think, appropriately allowed in the R2 district um, expansions upward and mild expansions of the footprints in order to enable ham, um, families to age in place and to grow in place. And I think that's an important consideration here. This is an R2 property being considered for a family that wants to have a multi-generational approach to caring for an elderly member of the family who has some disability issues that require some accommodations, um, but also then would allow for children to grow up in the same household. Um, and, and for our neighborhood in Jasper Street, I, I want to just commend the family for choosing to age in place and keep Kirk in place. Um, and allow him to continue his life as a member of our community on, on Jasper Street. So I, I really want to thank, thank the, the family for a thoughtful approach to allowing him to age in place and, um, and, and, and for a thoughtful approach to design a house that is in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, the last point I make is on the ADA side. I, I, as, a, as, a, uh, as someone who moved back to Scarborough to help care for an elderly family member who has mobility issues, I'm appreciative of the design. In fact, I'm thinking about this design from a ramp perspective and the rest for how it might be something that I could use for my father. Um, and I think this is a, a, a great way for the community to demonstrate its thoughtfulness about sort of universal design and design features for homes that in order to incorporate those might require a modest expansion of footprint or a, a, a yard size variance requirement. So I'd encourage the board to consider those elements going forward and I very much support the, uh, the applicant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak on this case, this appeal? Not hearing anything from the public? I'll close the public session. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, are there any written comments, phone calls? I received no written comments or phone calls, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much. At this point, the board will uh, begin its discussion with a similar approach to those <coughs> we've taken this evening. Uh, open up each one, uh, have a quick summary. Give everyone the opportunity to weigh in and discuss. Um, take a quick vote and proceed. So with that being said, we'll take a look at C1. The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot of record. As we've heard tonight, this has been confirmed by Mr. Longstaff that this home was constructed back in 1962. Um, are there any other comments? Findings of fact from the board? Not hearing any or seeing any? Mr. Bork, how would you vote on this? Yes. Uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silfman? Yes. I vote aye as well. Two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, Mr. Bork, can we hear your thoughts on this? Sure. Uh, the applet has. Uh accessibility needs in order to enjoy the dwelling in the same manner so the properties are enjoyed by other owners, by their owners. Uh, by allowing uh, the vertical expansion of the existing non-conforming dwelling, the owner can renovate the first floor to accommodate those accessibility challenges and relocate bedrooms to the second floor. All right, thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, other comments from the board? Not seeing or hearing any, we'll take a vote on number two. Uh, Mr. Bork? Yes. Uh, Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. Add vote, aye as well. 
Three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with currently applicable yard size requirements. Once again, I appreciate the drawings, the calculations, and the graphics provided to this evening to help illustrate that multiple approaches were attempted prior to tonight's uh, request. Um, we saw and heard of turning radiuses and those impacts, the needs and space allocations for ramps uh, and parking of vehicles, um, first floor access, and its impacts on the second floor. Um, but are there any other comments from the board? <coughs> Hearing any, we'll take a vote on number three. Mr. Bork? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood would not be substantially different from, the, uh, from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. I know, Mr. Silkman, if you'd like to weigh in on this one. <clears throat> sure. The second floor is consistent with existing buildings in the neighborhood. <clears throat> the movement of the garage, most of the buildings there have garages. Looks perfectly consistent with <clears throat> what's going on in that region. Shouldn't have any impacts at all. Thank you, Mr. Slipman. As Mr. Uh, Longstaff pulled up, we saw some street views for conformance and heard from public comments that it would be consistent uh, with nearby properties. Any other comments from the board? Not hearing any, Mr. Bork. I would hope. Yes, Mr. Uh, Ms. Uh, sorry, Ms. Snow. Aye. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mr. Silkman. Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number five: The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-fact application. We heard tonight that it has not yet commenced. But does the board have any other comments? Not hearing any, we'll take a vote on number five as well. Mr. Bork? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Uh, is there a motion from the board? One more. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, thank you. Uh, take a vote. Mr. Bork? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rejoin the board, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Please. Approved. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're debating. Right. <laughs> Mr. Bollinger back on the board. Um, Ms. Stevenson will step back down as an alternate. It's a tough call. I'm out of here. And I'm sorry that I cheated and used the restroom during my time in the public. So, yes. I knew she'd be drunk with power. <laughs> Next up, we're going to hear appeal number uh, 2722, the limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Pamela Stone at 17 Ferry Road, Assessor's Map U017, Lot 90. I'm completely ill prepared, as Mr. Longstaff probably is completely aware. Um, this is my home on Ferry Road, Pam Stone, 17 Ferry Road. Uh, I live in Rhode Island also and do construction and restore <coughs> old homes, and it's completely different there. <laughs> so um, I do believe I have all the documents that are here, but I will need, if I have to read my questions, I don't have the answers to um, I am eventually building an accessory unit, well, not building, but redoing the barn that is to the left. And so, therefore, I'm trying to um, tie in the existing garage, which we've got a line, move it over and connect it to the main existing house, which was built in 1920-ish. I think it was a Sears home, actually. Um, nothing is conforming on the lot, obviously. Everything set back two feet from the lot line. <laughs> I'm trying to as I said, move the garage up, so from three feet back of the lot, move it up to 12. So I'm actually improving that. If I moved it any forward, I'm way off my 45 feet from my street, you know, set back. Um, I don't know what else do you need to say. All right, well, thank you for your time this evening. So I'm improving my setback. I'm not increasing the impervious cover. 
Uh, it'll look fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I appreciate that, uh, that summary. Um, just as you've, you've heard this evening, um, just to read your responses into the record uh, for future use. I um, don't know if it would be possible to share the responses. Yes. Okay. Um, I have the plans. I just did not need it to. That's fine. This. So uh, what I'll do is I'll read the questions. And once again, you can provide, uh, read your written responses. Yes. You're also more than welcome to expand upon them. Um, and then afterwards, uh, the board will have the opportunity to ask questions. So uh, with that being said, um, we'll start on page three of your packet. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, under project description and circumstances, part A, uh, I think you've already done this, but you're more than welcome to continue on. Generally describe the project and why a reduction of a yard size is, is needed. So the garage is currently three foot setback. It would like I'd like to move it forward um, to eleven foot setback uh, in order to connect the primary residence to the garage. It's currently at three feet. Um, and that's it. Okay. Um, I, and that I, structure is already existing, so I'm actually just moving it so it won't change the appearance. It all ties in. All three buildings are exactly built the same with the shingles, the colors, the the windows and all that stuff. So. Okay. Are there questions from the board on this one? Mr. Fowler. Just to understand, so the garage is going to be moved forward and moved over a bit. Yes. Um, and you will build a structure that will connect that to the main building as well. Yeah, sort of that 250 foot structure that's cornered into the. Gotcha. Path. Will it continue to look as a garage? It looks like the driveway cuts off now, so it's not really a garage. It doesn't look like a garage. It's not going to be a garage. It's going to be a fam the first, The second floor currently is a living space. The first floor now will be storage in the back, and in the front will be a, a den that goes out to a patio. And so just to, so I understand this, you're going to move the building? You're not going to construct a new building. You're going no, to move the, it. and if you saw, I guess I don't have a picture of the ex It's I redid the building 10 years ago in the existing space. I bought it from the Janelles. I don't know if anyone here knows the Janelles. Fourth generation, they built all the Prout's neck houses, and uh, there was a 6,000 square foot shed that covered the entire barn. That entire yard was a tar covered shed. So, um, so okay, so it's the structure is in place. You lift it up. Yep. New or, foundation. Build new foundation. Place it on the new foundation, yep. and then, if not, tear down. Open up a wall and construct a space that then connects it to the. Yes, the main where it house. says kitchen on there, that will be new. The okay. whole kitchen area. Okay, got it. I, I just want to be clear. The the narrative was confusing me a bit there. So that, thank you, thank you. Um, you can only imagine how confused Mr. Longstaff has been. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty years of non improvements. I don't envy him. So yes. Um, but uh, I, I <laughs> aged three <laughs> years. I aged three years with this application. Oh, wow. um, All right. Th thank you. No, I, I just needed a picture on that one. It was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. There are other questions from the board? Uh, I, I do have a question as a follow-up to what you've shared this evening. Um, the request that you have as part of the application is just for, for that current shed and the work that we're seeing on the screen right now. I, I, and the reason why I asked yes. is I think you mentioned uh, to the left of the site the barn is right. The barn. I'm not doing anything right okay. now. I'm trying to get the proper square footage for the house so that eventually I can have your dimensional square footage for my accessory building, which will be the barn as it exists. It'll only be the inside will be changed. Okay, um, but the barn is not part of this. Application. No. Okay. No. Thank you. Uh, so if there aren't any other questions, we'll move on to Part B. List the exact dimension reduction requested. Eleven feet. Eleven feet. From the rear. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Ward? Ask a quick question there. What is what is the required setback? Fifteen. Fifteen. So the variance you're requesting is four feet then, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I just want to make that clear because it wasn't really in here I know. that way. Okay. So it's important for us. So At least I can I can come to terms with all this. So we're we're, we're, we're trying to help you to, yes. to identify okay. what it is you're asking for. Yes. So what you're asking for is a four foot variance. Yes. Okay. To the rear setback. Yes. Okay. Which is, which is within what we can approve, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. You know, we can approve up to five feet. 
Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Other questions? Not hearing any, we'll turn the page to C1. The existing buildings or structures on the lots for which the limited reduction of yard size residential was requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, yes, the record, it was 1920 it was erected, so prior to 1991. So you're saying it was, uh, it was erected in 1920? I believe so. Yeah, and the assessor's record has 1910, but when they're yeah. that old, it's... It's the best guess. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I, I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> yeah. well, I think Lawrence 18 yeah. something personally, yeah. but right. that doesn't matter. Uh, questions from the board <laughs> or just first one? No, as long as we change that to you know, what yeah. is uh, okay. what the record is. All right, number two then. Uh, the request for reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, my copy is the old copy before I corrected it. Uh, yes, there are several in the area, you know, three, two family, lots of accessory buildings, lots of garages connected to the homes, um, architecturally very similar, a lot of cottages and giant homes down the road that I can't believe adhere to impervious cover, but anyway, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Questions from the board for the second one? All right, if you don't mind, I, I do have a question as a yeah. follow-up. Um, so it sounds as if from what it currently exists to what you're proposing, there would be a slight change in its use um, as a connector uh, with the new kitchen. Um, but you were saying, and I apologize if you... I'm taking out, there's a kitchen existing yep. that I'm taking out and just move it in into the addition. So... Uh, Currently, the, you see where it says kitchen there. Currently, the kitchen is, see where it says mudroom, right below kitchen. That is the current kitchen in that square yep. area. That whole, yeah, that whole area there. And the current shed uh, is used for storage, is that correct? The current uh, garage, the garage. second floor is a living space, and the first floor is a garage, yes. And would the, uh, approximately be the same when it's relocated? Uh, the first floor will be about one third garage or storage, and the other portion will be a living space. Okay, thank you. So, for there aren't any questions, we'll move on to number three. Due to the physical features of the lot to enter the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Uh, no, because if I move it just because of the, the narrowness of the lot, you know, it's, it's, I'm asking for the four feet where it is. If I moved it forward, I'd be on the 45 feet. I'd be, you know, and yeah. And I need to connect it together, and it's not practical in order to create the square footage I need to for the home and not have a huge expense All reconstructing. Right, uh, questions from the board on this one? Um. And I just have one question on the 45 foot setback is it's not shown on the diagram is that the distance between what will now be the new family room and the street or the um, lot line well nothing you know nothing that's existing currently is conforming to anything so um, if I'm understanding your question properly you know I, I'm at three feet right now for the the way it is, and so if I, 45 feet, I don't have it on here, but it's, it's like 10 feet from, if I move it 10 feet forward, it's already encroaching on the 45 feet that you're supposed to have for the front. It's, it's actually 40 feet, but oh, 40. the lot depth is around 75 feet, so uh, if you go in 40 feet, that leaves you with 35 feet, um, and then 15 feet from the back leaves you with 20 feet. Um, basically, you get a 20 foot deep building window, I think is what she's, she's trying to explain. Is if she moved, uh, the, the garage is 24 feet in depth. Mm -hmm. So, no matter if, if she tried to meet the 15 foot rear setback, she'd encroach into the front, front setback. If she tried to meet the front setback, she's going to encroach into the rear setback. So, the building was completely redone 
nine years ago. So it's not a matter of why don't you tear it down and figure out something because there's a lot of expense and insulation and all that that's already gone into the building that I'm moving. All right, thank you. Other so questions, Mr. Stone? The lot dimension is constricting her options. That's, that's fair to say. But we don't know whether there is options. Um, Did you perhaps um, try any other uh, locations of the garage and relationship to the existing structure? I did, but they all encroach on the setbacks every direction. And then my only option is to reduce, I mean, to tear down the building, which has a whole lot of money in it. So I didn't see that to be practical. Um, I think I'll be improving. I'm not doing overdoing impervious cover. I think it'll be improving the look of the envelope of the property. Yeah, I was going to oh, say, you. this makes it a much more attractive uh, building to have everything line up square yeah. as you're doing. Uh, so you're not encroaching on the front setback at all with the garage. You're simply moving the garage forward as far as you can without encroaching. Right. And you're asking for four feet of relief on the rear yeah. setback. You're not building anything new. You're simply moving an existing structure right. and actually can't to be more conforming. Down. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, so thank you. Um, Could have gotten you up here. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> So it sounds as if uh, multiple uh, locations were considered, and that uh, relocating the existing structure would make it into more conformance with regard to the rear setback, but not exceed the front. Uh, and I'll start out of the questions and move on to number four. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses of the road would not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Um. I have the old one here. Uh, no, I think I answered. Do we need? Um, need uh, to expand upon just for the record. Yes, there's a. I mean, there's a lot of old camps in the neighborhood uh, that are all the same sizes, two stories, garages. Um, this was built historically, you know, 1910. I mean, it's it's really it speaks for itself. Uh, I think. So. Again, speaking from, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's Thank you. Uh, questions from the board. Someone starts pulling up. Shows, that was the picture before of how it looked when it had the 6,000 square foot shed around it. <laughs> the one that he brought up. We're still taxing you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. And all the toilets, the 47 toilets and the 54 refrigerators in there. There we go. Oh, that's it now. Wow. There's the house. There's the garage. As you can see, that's a garage with living space over the top down the street, get the Von Stadi residence. That's a lilacs. But this will be before when it looked a little different than it does now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot of changes, particularly in some of these side streets. Yes. <clears throat> there's a lot of new, uh, you know, replacement homes and Fairly substantial. Making me long for July, too. <laughs> I know, isn't it awful? Look at the flowers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not long here. Over there. Here's a fairly good size yeah. residence like this, very similar with an attached mm -hmm. garage. Yeah. Just to give you a flavor for what's around there. And that looks totally different now over there. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mr. Lester. So unless there are any questions, we'll move on to the next. Number five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. No. Thank you. How often do people do that? 
<laughs> I'm just curious. That's a, oh, and how after often the fact. Uh, do they come in after they've started? Never, because I shut them down before they go. <laughs> Very good CEO. <laughs> he gets real nasty when that happens. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board with that? All right. Well, thank you very much. So at this point, uh, open it for public comment. Not seeing any, we'll close it. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, were there any written emails? Did comments? not get any calls, emails, letters, postcards, or any other communications on this. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. So the board will go into uh, its discussion, findings of fact. Go through our questions. Um, the existing structures, uh, buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. We've heard tonight that uh, the assessor's uh, report indicated that the property was from the 1910s. Um, any other comments from the board? No. Take a quick vote. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Freiner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, Mr. Bork, we're here to talk to us. Well, um, this, as, as Mr. Longstaff showed us in his pictures, this particular neighborhood has a lot of different types of buildings, and they're very old, but most of them are. There's some new buildings that come in. Uh, so I, I think we really have a, uh, a hodgepodge of, of different types of structures there. Uh, and, and what the applicant is proposing here is very simple. It's just moving a garage, uh, fitting it in nicely with the architecture of the home, and it, it really makes it uh, more attractive for the neighborhood in general to fit in with what other very attractive structures are already in, in that neighborhood around here. So um, I, I think that um, you know, the applicant does uh, you know, show you know, you know, with, with help that uh, there is compliance. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Board. Uh, does the board have any other comments? Not hearing any or seeing any? We'll take a vote on number two. Uh, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Frangner? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mr. Uh, Silkman? Yes. And I'd vote aye as well. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Due to the unique circumstances of the property and its lot, um, the front and rear setbacks, and using the existing structure rather than building new, uh, due to the depth of it being 24 feet, uh, it is in a unique situation that it would uh, potentially have to um, not meet either one or the other. And what's provided to us tonight is proposed not to encroach upon the front yard setback and to make an improvement upon the existing rear yard setbacks. Um, does the board have any other follow thoughts, comments? Mr. Frangler. I, I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman. My, my issue here is that the unique requirement in my mind that's at play here is the reuse of the existing historic property, which um, is appropriate. It's in keeping with the other um, properties in the historic district, which is sort of the Pine Point area. Um, if this were a new building or if the proposal were to place this as a teardown and an expansion, I think the board would have to view this in a different light. Um, but because of the preservation of the existing structure um, and the advantages both from a community perspective and from an aesthetic perspective in the neighborhood, that unique um, feature allows us to feel comfortable with this one. But I just want to make a note that that, that is the unique feature rather than anything else. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, other comments, questions from the board? Not hearing any, I'll take a vote. Number three, Mr. Yeah. Bork. Yes. Mr. Cronler. Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote aye as well. Number four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood would not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Uh, Mr. Fronger, would you mind sharing on this one? 
Yeah, and again, related to the comments on number three, um, first off, I'll observe that this is not a new building or structure except for the expansion, which is within the conforming footprint um, for, the, for the lot. Um, the movement of the garage reduces the setback um, uh, uh, um, violation, if you will, from uh, three feet to 11 feet on the back, so it improves that. And certainly is definitely in conforming with uses of the neighborhood, which also has similar attached garages and, uh, and, and, and buildings of this age and type. All right, thank you, Mr. Brown. There. Other comments uh, from the board? Not hearing any or seeing any. We'll take a vote on number four. Mr. Borg? Yes. Mr. Fraunner? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Mr. Silkman? Yes. I'd vote aye as well. Number five, the applicant has not commenced construction on the, of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after effect application. I heard tonight that it has not yet commenced. Um, but does the Board have any other thoughts, comments about this? Not hearing any. Uh, Mr. Borg, have you voted? Yes. Mr. Fraunner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Silkman? Yes. I vote aye as well. Is there a motion from the board? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Right, thank you. Um, take a vote. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Fraunner? Yes. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Sultan? Yes. I vote aye as well. It's passed. Thank you. Don't forget to get your building permit. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you fill out your building permit better than you filled out your application. When you do a property, they just are like, okay, you're who you're related to. It's pretty bad there, so I appreciate it. I really appreciate y'all's time and You know, I know a lot of code officers in Rhode Island, so I'm going to be checking them. You go right ahead. They all have a challenge last minute. Good night. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, zoning board comments. This evening we've heard a suggestion from Mr. Fonger. Yeah, um, the, the, uh, I was, again, surprised by the need for a, um, a non-conforming uh, use variance for the uh, horticultural project, or horticultural um, home base in a RF2 district. Um, the overlap between horticultural businesses and that and farming businesses is so great that I think it, it's worth kind of elevating to the to the code folks that, hey, this kind of makes sense. Well, just quickly, if I might, might sure. Mr. Chair. I mean, a, a land, a, a property maintenance company is not exactly the same as a horticultural business. A horticultural business would act, would be an agricultural or commercial ag business. Sure. And that would be a, a permitted use. So yeah. this is a little bit different in, in that. You know they're not they're not selling plants and stuff. Yeah, no, I mean now. So, so just to just to clarify the difference, but I, I don't disagree with you. I, and, and actually, you're probably in a good position uh, with the uh, uh, the long range planning yeah. committee to to maybe make that suggestion. But I'll certainly carry that to the planning yeah, director. Yeah, if, if you want to do that, I'll talk to Jay as well. Sure. But um, and 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 it, and it will. We are looking at the RF two district for a variety of different uses and kind of. Making sure that we're we've got a consistent growth management plan for the RF two districts and the uh, the uh, the west of the turnpike districts as we have for the east of the turnpike districts and this is one of the things that well I think we should add to the agenda for that so yeah if I could ask you as staff to do it I will definitely do it as from the LRPC perspective as well. Thank you, Mr. Browner. Other comments from the staff uh, from the board. Mr. Browner again. I, I hate to say it, but that last request was. Poorly presented. Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, the and, rolling. <laughs> and and I I I I don't know, um, Brian. What we can do? I'm not sure. We can't hold people to a certain standard. But, gosh, that was hard. <laughs> um, and I just want to. I, I I frankly don't mind going on the record saying that. Thank you for sharing. Well, I, yeah, on the other hand, I, I think that we need to respect applicants' right to present as they choose. And I, I know that Brian does a terrific job trying to prepare people and encourages them to use staff when appropriate, to, yeah. or consultants or whatever, or even legal yeah. uh, when appropriate. So if they come up here unprepared, then that's fine. You know, then they, you know, we, we helped her through this and 
I guess we don't have to do that. You know, we could have yeah. just sat here and said, nope, you didn't convince us. You could have, but, you know, I, I don't know what we could do. Yeah, and, 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 and I hear you, David, and, and, and that's what I worry about. We become coaches or we become facilitators as opposed to adjudicators. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we, we, we get put in that awkward position. Yep. And maybe we have to kind of say, no, you didn't present the evidence. You didn't. Pre pre we all we are we live in the town. We know. Um, uh, 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 I was going to say Black Point. We know Black Point. Um, we've seen a lot of properties in this. We can see what you're doing, but you've got to come to us with a package. So I just I I, I bring it to our attention. I don't know what to do about it either. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, it was it was a painful <coughs> process, and I wasn't sure how to proceed with it. I'm just, uh, yeah. I would like to add something to that too, where we did have what, five or six other appeals that we heard, mm -hmm. when we're taking the time to actually explain stuff to the applicant, um, it can, I mean, that wasn't, that didn't take up too much of our time that in addition to what she was presenting, but it could have. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess if it's presented any poorly, <clears throat> like more poorly than that, we're, Gonna have to make some decisions. <laughs> Had that been our first appeal of the night, and those other folks yeah. who were, were witnessing that, I would have been even more uncomfortable, I guess, because yeah. the, the what the other applicants came to, and what our normal standard applicant comes to, is of a really high quality, and 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 they're they're ready for questions. Um, if anything, they've simply misplaced the sheet where they have to read off their responses that they've already typed out. Um, but otherwise, they're ready with docu diagrams, documents, and, and, and really on point. So yeah, um, I'm glad that was the end of the, the cycle. Um, and, and, um, and Mr. Chairman, you've done a great job tonight as, well, um, as your replacement chairman. Thank you very much. You. Um, you use the gavel a little bit more than, than uh -huh. James does, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, but I, I just just highlight that, and it, it was an awkward final appeal. Thank but, you. But going to that issue, though, I mean, it, the application stands on its own. Yeah. I mean, it is the application, and if it was deficient, we would have found it to be deficient. I mean, it, it was clearly <clears throat> acceptable to all of us that it got its approval, and I think that you know the applicant bears the risk of incomplete applications. The applicant bears the risk of findings of insufficiency. And I don't think we should be imposing any requirements on the applicant other than what's required in the application procedure. And if the applicant wants to answer a question, yes, that's the applicant's prerogative to do that. If we're satisfied that that answer is, is adequate, then we'll approve it. If it's not, it won't. I, I mean, I think it is hard to establish standards across projects because we're going to get projects where there are, you know, 20, 30 million dollar projects with architectural firms behind them. And we're going to get projects where people simply can't afford to have professional architects and they bring to us a, a problem that they're dealing with. So I'm, and this is the public and, you know, we, we have to serve them, and I'm, I'm, I don't think we should impose any additional standards beyond the application. That's, that's a good point, and she was very fortunate that it was a relatively simple yes. request. Yeah. And once we define, what, okay, what is it you're asking for? <laughs> oh, you know, a various which we can approve, mm -hmm. okay? It was really easy for us to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. But, you know, had she, if she were presenting something that were a lot more complex, we would have to deny it, you know, <laughs> just based on... Yeah. Lack of information to substantiate it. Agreed. Fortunately, and that's that's the risk you take. Yeah. yeah. And agreed. The application included diagrams that made the the footage changes, you know, a, a matter of simple arithmetic. So that, that the information that was required for us to know what the variance was and all the rest, to your point, was 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 there. But um, it's just the standard that we show to others. If she had gone with that again with a more complicated thing, or for and this is why I entered into the record, if we had gone into it with a new structure as opposed to moving an existing structure, we would have had a very different conversation, but we probably would have gotten the same application. So, um, yeah, I, I, thank you for letting me just bring this point up and thanks for the discussion. I appreciate it. It's good, good discussion here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't want to belabor, belabor the meeting or drag it out, but just, just for everybody's edification. 
I do spend quite a bit of time. There's rarely an application that comes before you that I haven't spent time with the applicant. Sometimes they surprise me. Uh, I've gotten a few. But I spent a lot of time on, um, on all the applications tonight. And certain people will absorb the guidance that I give them, and certain yeah. people do not. That's right. Yeah, and I saw some of your staff notes, and I was really surprised that yeah. there wasn't any additional information given. But to Mr., and I appreciate Mr. Siltman's uh, points, in, in, as well as Mr. Uh, Bork's, it, we do get the gambit of professional to amateur, and I think it's, I think it's unfair to compare the amateur to the professional. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, so you do, I think, at, at, at your uh, discretion, you have the, the discretion to coax out the information that you need or, or, or just deny the application and say, I'm sorry, there's just, or you can table I think and ask did, for more information. I think we did the right thing. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. So. She was just a poor communicator. She yeah. was a very simple yeah. ask, and she was a poor communicator. All right. Uh, are there other comments uh, from the board tonight, or in preparation for next month's meeting? Motion to adjourn. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. You did a great job tonight.